How's it going guys? We have a medium difficulty question for farm for step one. This question, this style is all over the NBMEs. Okay, so an exceedingly high yield point. I've made other audio cubing questions on this topic before. Uh, not going to waste our fucking time. So before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give the video a like. I really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical. M-E-H-L-M-A-N underscore medical. Links down below. Find me on Telegram. Links to the Telegram group and channel down below. Now start the clip. So 64-year-old man, he has a five-year history of congestive heart failure. He's on lisinopril, metoprolol, furosemide, and physical exam shows bilateral uh, peripheral edema up to the knees. He has mild wheezes auscultated in his lungs bilaterally as well. And the question wants to know, agent of which of the following mechanisms of action is most appropriate to add to his regimen? So let's just whip through the answer choices here. Choice A, decreases aquaporin insertion, wrong fucking answer. This would refer to the ADH uh, receptor antagonists such as tolvaptan or conivaptan, yieldness non-existent on USMLE, okay? I mean, you can be aware of them peripherally now that the step one went to pass fail in January of this year, 2022. Uh, not necessary to know those agents, okay? But you could just be aware that for SIADH, the treatment that USMLE wants, uh, which is on NBME, NBME 8 for 2CK, is actually demeclocycline, okay? It's a tetracycline antibiotic that for whatever fucking reason can cause nephrogenic DI that can cancel out SIDH. So conivaptan, tolvaptan, they would technically uh, block ADH receptors and decrease, decrease aquaporin insertion. In this case, wrong fucking answer. Choice B increases guanylocyclase activity, wrong answer, this would refer to nitrates. Okay, that's what nitrates do in the treatment of angina, ischemic heart disease. So uh, nitrates upregulate guanylocyclase, increases CAMP, increases protein kinase G, leads to relaxation of venous smooth muscle, causes venous pooling, decreases preload, decreases oxygen demand on the heart, and relieves the chest pain uh, due to myocardial oxygen demand. Wrong fucking answer. Choice C, inhibition of arteriolar calcium channels, wrong answer. This would refer to the dihydropyridine calcium channel blockers, such as nifedipine, amlodipine, okay? Long fucking discussion. Uh, you could be aware for 2CK family med, uh, essentially 301 level stuff, is that if a patient has hypertension, does not have prediabetes, diabetes, any atherosclerotic disease, uh, no protein in the urine, then you can give the patient a dihydropyridine calcium channel blocker, such as nifedipine, or hydrochlorothiazide as the first line treatment for hypertension. In this case, wrong fucking answer. Choice D inhibition of nodal calcium channels would refer to verapamil, okay, so non dihydropyridine calcium channel blockers. Some students ask about diltiazem, exceedingly low yield. I've seen it asked once. You need to know diltiazem is used for the treatment of uh, unstable angina. Okay, that's on one of the new NBME exams for 2CK. So all you need to know is diltiazem, unstable angina. For rapamil, you need to know that it can be used in place of metoprolol in some patients who have atrial fibrillation. Okay, I mean, verapamil, uh, not only does it act on the nodal calcium channels, but uh, you should also know that uh, it can cause constipation. Okay, so uh, the dihydropyridine, such as nifedipine, those will cause peripheral edema, fluid retention, exceedingly high yield for family medicine. Verapamil causes constipation, okay? In this case, wrong fucking answer. Choice the inhibition of steroid receptors is the correct answer. So I decided to be a flagrant asshole and make this question a little bit more difficult. Now, this refers to aldosterone, okay? Aldosterone receptor. The drug is spironolactone. Now you say, well, no idea what the fuck is going on here. Okay, well, I mean, isn't aldosterone a steroid hormone? So this is a very generic answer choice. Steroid hormones, testosterone, estrogen, progesterone, cortisol, aldosterone, okay? So steroid receptors. Spironolactone is an aldosterone receptor antagonist. Now, there's two points I can make as far as why spironolactone is a treatment. You could either be astute and happen to know the pyramid pharmacologic sequence for how we manage heart failure, which I have in my Anki cards, uh, in my farm modules as well, where we start with an ACE inhibitor or an ARB, we go to a beta block, we add a beta blocker next. A loop diuretic, such as furosemide, doesn't decrease mortality, but just is used for fluid unloading. Then we can add spironolactone, then we can add hydralazine and nitrates, the combination, then we can add uh, digoxin, which doesn't decrease mortality, and then eventually go to uh, implanted uh, cardioverters or defibrillators. So uh, patients who 
uh, have heart failure can either undergo that sequence of pharmacologic management or the second point you can be aware of, and this is actually the high yield uh, point you need to know, is that patients who are already on potassium wasting diuretics, if the stem tells you a patient is on a loop diuretic or on a thiazide, patients already on one of these agents and is going to go on another diuretic, they want it to be a potassium sparing diuretic. That makes sense. We don't want hypokalemia. Okay, so the answer is going to be spironolactone, can be eplerinone. Eplerinone, pretty much non-existent yieldness, okay? Uh, it's just a variant of spironolactone, lesser chance of gynecomastia as a side effect, but spironolactone or eplerinone block aldosterone receptors. Spironolactone, uh, as I just fucking said, can cause gynecomastia antiandrogenic. You can also know that the ENAC inhibitors, amylaride, triamterine, uh, those, the answer choice will be... Uh, uh, increases intraluminal concentration of sodium. If you block ENAC on the, the the luminal membrane of the cortical collecting duct in the kidney, then you're going to increase natriuresis, which means sodium micturition. Okay, you're decreasing sodium reabsorption. So the answer choice can be uh, inhibition of steroid receptors, inhibition of aldosterone receptors for, for spironolactone. It can be decreases uh, luminal absorption of sodium or increases uh, urinary excretion of sodium. Okay, those are the answer choices they want for the potassium sparing diuretics. And your point of consolidation is that if a patient is already on a loop diuretic or a thiazide and needs to go on another diuretic, you want it to be a potassium sparing diuretic. Okay, and those are going to be the ENAC inhibitors, amylaride or triamterine, or aldosterone receptor antagonists such as spironolactone or eplerinone. You know the deal to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel. I appreciate your time. That's it.